Hello everyone. Um, this is a game that I had played um, not too long ago. I've been playing a lot of correspondence chess lately and I've been kind of getting uh, bored with it and uh, I thought I'd go back to online games. Um, I am trying to get to the 1700 level which is a plateau for me. Um, in my chess correspondent games, I have played a uh, master level uh, player as well, which has been a really good eye-opening experience. And um, um, uh, something that I've been kind of uh, frustrated with and stuff like that, which is fine. Um, I've just... Uh, noticed a lot of mistakes that I've made and it's hard to uh, keep up with someone of that uh, level but like I said it's been a learning experience and I'm uh, so glad for that experience so uh, this is a game I played and uh, I was playing the white pieces my opponent was playing the black pieces I was uh, 1603 at the time and my opponent was 1492 I have dropped down considerably lately so uh, we'll start off the game And um, I played this game, uh, not this game, I played this move because it kind of reminded me of the French defense uh, winnerware uh, variation. So I thought, well, let's see what happens that when I bring some of my black French defense um, stuff to um, my game as white. And this was the last uh, buck move for um, the Four Knights game. And um, for move uh, one to six uh, were the following moves and my opponent decided to play H6. Now, if you wanted to continue on with this variation, the next move in the uh, move order is Bishop, uh, e7 and as I said before I had thought well let's try something that I played as black you know the winnower uh, sorry the winnower uh, variation for the French defense I wasn't quite sure how to how it was going to happen unfortunately my uh, computer had suggested perhaps this move and as you can see here, directly, uh, directly threatens the knight, as opposed to directly threatening the queen, which is not a big threat. And um, once this uh, pawn is taken, um, white really can't fight back. So I'll continue on with the game. And um, my computer thought this was kind of an interesting but confusing move and had suggested C3 instead. And um, as you can see here, I can develop my queen uh, quickly and I have the option to uh, castle queenside if I want compared to um, I've developed the queen but not as quickly as I could have developed it if uh, I played uh, c3 so I'm a little bit more cramped I do have the option to castle queenside as well so I'll continue on with the game And here I opted to um, attack 
my opponent's bishop. But um, my computer didn't like that. And uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, please keep in mind that there is a um, uh, positional analysis of what I had played compared to what my um, computer had suggested after the move. And more often than not, I find myself behind and slowly I will uh, pick up um, speed and my position gets a little bit better after being bad for so long. So I opted to play h6, which was confusing to my uh, computer, but it figured the position was about equal. And uh, my computer had suggested perhaps queen b3 would be better because I am attacking the uh, b7 pawn. My opponent might come up and defend the pawn. Um, g6 might be played and all we would be doing is exchanging pawns which would open up the h file and I am already attacking the pawn on h6 so the rook or the dark square bishop is going to have to stay back in order to help defend this pawn my opponent might play uh, bishop g7 and to me um whoops let's just uh go back a step here sorry to me I, um castling king side doesn't make much uh sense as a human being um just because my to me if i was playing black My, uh, I don't have a pawn shield really, and it doesn't make sense for me to castle uh, into the line of fire. I would far rather try to develop my queen and my light square bishop trying to get uh, my king develop queenside or long castle. And uh, perhaps I might reply with um, knight c4. And as you can see here, I do have two, sorry, my opponent has two defenders. I do have two attackers. And perhaps there would be a possibility of bringing my rook up in order to attack my opponent's e5 square, uh, uh, sorry, e5 pawn. And perhaps my opponent would defend the uh, b7 square, allowing their light square bishop to be uh, developed. And perhaps uh, knight e3 might be an idea. And I was trying to figure out uh, why my computer would recommend something like this. And I thought, well, if I can put my knight here, is there a possibility of somehow um, trying to attack the king? It's one of those things where I'll look at the computer analysis and I'll look at um, things that I would want to do and um, don't just blindly follow the computer. Try to come up with an idea as to why the computer would recommend this. Like, even if you don't take this pawn, there's a threat here and the queen is defending this uh, pawn. And uh, here you can see uh, my opponent might uh, cash castle kingside. And as I had said before, I don't really like it personally because my king is kind of out in the open and I'm using my dark square bishop as a uh, pawn 
in order to defend the king. Um, yeah, um, I am defending this pawn twice, and perhaps my computer figures, you know, in this particular setup, it will be harder for me to reroute uh, pieces since you know I'm taking a lot of the at uh, the center up um, but to me something like this just looks uh, alien and uh, personally I would not recommend it and uh, my computer had suggested perhaps a rook d1 would be an option and the way I was figuring um, what might happen is if I push this pawn up, perhaps my opponent might take with the pawn. If, let's say, I move uh, up with the knight, perhaps my opponent would take with the bishop. I have the pawn that I can take with, and perhaps I can even push that pawn in order to interfere with my knight um, and I kind of felt as though if uh, my opponent didn't quite calculate properly maybe there might be an idea of somehow uh, targeting uh, the queen uh, obviously long-term goals so we'll go back to the game And here my opponent targets this pawn. And after this move, I was like, uh-oh, now I need to defend the pawn. The thing I forgot was I'm already defending it with the king. So moving the knight wasn't necessarily something that I had to do. But of course, I'm playing a, a time game, 30-minute game, 20-second increments. And uh, that's me playing slow. Oh, sorry, that's me playing fast. Um, I do like longer time controls because I like to sit and try to think about what I'm doing. And um, I had opted for this move. And it does defend the pawn. And it also um, defends this square as well. And I thought maybe perhaps I could push my... Uh, g3 pawn up attacking the queen and if the pawn comes down to take the the pawn perhaps I come up with a pawn again my knight's defended by my pawn and the light square bishop um, so you know attacking the queen maybe it could push the queen away somehow but my computer didn't like that and thought this move was better just because, like I said before, I am defending this pawn with the king and there are no immediate threats. My opponent could come down with the dark square bishop, I think. Put pressure on this piece here. And um, I'm not quite sure what I would do in this position. You know, if I push the pawn, pawn comes down. You know, the pawn comes back to take. Dark square bishop comes down, putting pressure here. So maybe that's not an option. Uh, maybe a better option uh, would uh, be just to uh, bring the rook over in order to add uh, even more support to that particular uh, piece. So my opponent might decide to castle queenside, which attacks my d3 pawn, and uh, perhaps we'd exchange pawns. It does allow for uh, the possibility of coming down here and attacking my opponent's king. My opponent might come up and try to defend the king, add more uh, peace support. And um, coming down and uh, attacking the king, but I'm also defending 
P3 as well. And perhaps there'd be a possibility of exchanging um, my light square bishop for knight and uh, perhaps um, the pawn might come down in order to um, capture the light square bishop but then it opens up my opponent's pawn shield so my opponent would have to defend the king and perhaps my rook would move over and I'm I'm wondering perhaps is there a discovered uh, check at all someplace uh, where I can uh, perhaps move my my pieces you know taking the knight perhaps and opening up maybe opening up my opponent's uh, king side Pawn is defended by my queen, um, and you know simply if I wanted to maybe move my knight over, you know there are two pieces uh, defending this pawn, and I have two attackers. Maybe even pushing the pawn up might be an idea. I'm not quite sure, but then perhaps my queen would be at risk. My opponent might decide to come down and defend the pawn and it also opens up the back rank for uh, the rooks to come over and attack my queen. Perhaps I defend my queen in this instance. My opponent's uh, bishop might come down. Maybe uh, the idea here is uh, by uh, maybe moving the rook over, you know, eyeballing this pawn here, and uh, maybe um, maybe somehow trying to entice me to push my pawn up, and uh, there is also this threat here. I'm not quite sure how that would work out. My, um, I might uh, decide to push my pawn, which uh, might attack the knight at some point in time. Perhaps my opponent would want to exchange queens. Uh, I get my king off the back rank, just in case things go south. Uh, helping to defend my king a little bit better. And we both exchange queens, and now I'm threatening my opponent's dark square bishop. So my opponent would probably defend. And um, maybe uh, I would move my rook over to help assist my, uh, my pawn. And that being said, there's one uh, there are two um, two attackers here bearing down on this pawn, and at the time I only had one defender, so I do have uh, the extra defender in case uh, one of my opponent's pieces uh, want to try to exchange. So that's good. And I was uh, wondering if maybe perhaps this pawn would come down, and if so, I would just probably march the pawn up, attacking my opponent's knight. So I'll go back to the game. And with this move here, I kind of felt as though, well, where do I move my knight? You know, um, I don't have uh, a lot of options other than uh, back here. And I thought, well, if you're attacking my knight, maybe I can attack a more, uh, more valuable piece trying to gain the initiative, so I'm playing my game, I'm not playing their game. 
and I find that's one of the key uh, things to chess as well you know you're fighting for the initiative and if you have the initiative then your opponent has to react to what you're doing and if you can grab the initiative and make your opponent make mistakes then instead of attacking now they have to defend pieces um, I think grabbing the initiative is one of those um, uh, things that make us probably better uh, chess players and here my opponent attacks my c2 pawn oh sorry my um, f2 pawn and I simply moved my uh, ruck over and my computer didn't like that very much and felt um, this move was uh, fire superior exchanging pawns and now um, the threat is this pawn here and you know at the time I have uh, one defender here there are two defenders here you know even if let's say my late square bishop comes down in order to support this pawn here i thought well maybe um and we'll just uh quickly highlight that you know trying to add more support to the pawn and if my opponent pushes the pawn down then there's like one two three versus one uh, two pieces uh, defending this pawn so my knight has to move someplace and that would bring a third defender in which is the rook and if i had to move my knight my knight would probably come over here So perhaps I'd exchange knights, which would open up my opponent's pawn shield. And uh, then perhaps I'd move over here, attacking the hanging pawn, which would also attack my opponent's queen. But I still have to deal with two attackers um, on this square here. So uh, that being said, there could be a queen exchange. If I decided to move up and attack the queen, maybe the queen would come down, queen comes up, rook comes down. Might be a problem for me, but I do have another hanging pawn that I could take and uh, I'm not quite sure how the game would progress after that. Perhaps my opponent would exchange pawns. Perhaps I defend the d3 pawn just by pushing it to d4. My opponent might move back and decide to attack my hanging uh, a2 pawn. And uh, perhaps I'd move up and uh, gain a tempo attacking my opponent's king, forcing them to move and that allows me to move my king over in order to defend this pawn. And perhaps instead of moving the king here immediately to defend this pawn, uh, I do have the threat here attacking the king and uh, the queen as well. But if the queen comes down to take this pawn, you know, coming up here attacking the king, um, you know, you'd probably get a bishop exchange and then, you know, I'd have to worry about a rook exchange. Plus two, uh, I have a queen over here that's going to come down. It doesn't, it kind of ma it makes me a lot nervous. Perhaps my opponent might bring the rook over trying to uh, bring the king back. in order to try to bear down on this pawn as well. And now uh, perhaps I come over and uh, defend the pawns. 
Now my king defends this pawn that my queen attacks. This pawn is defended, uh, is defending the knight. So if the queen, if the king comes up to defend itself, opening up a discovered attack, my knight is defended. And this pawn, of course, is defended. So I'll just uh, go back to the game. <laughs> I opted to play this move and my idea behind this was if my opponent decided to come down here to take the pawn then I would move my bishop up and at the same time I'm attacking my opponent's uh, king as well so I had that on my mind as my plan my computer had thought that d4 would probably be more accurate. And here I'm directly attacking the queen. So if the pawn decides to come down, I do have a knight to b3 attacking my opponent's queen directly. And I do have two pieces attacking uh, this pawn as well, but my opponent could simply uh, move the queen back somewhere. So now I have, um, there are three uh, defenders, the queen, the knight, and my opponent's rook. Compared to uh, my knight, my pawn, and the rook, so there are three against three, and my opponent would have to bring in another uh, piece as well. I don't know if my opponent would want to play this move. Obviously not coming down here, because then I could exchange a uh, dark square bishop. And maybe perhaps that would be an idea, because I need one, two, three of my opponent does come down instead and plays a move like this, trying to sacrifice the dark square bishop. Uh, might be a great idea because now I'm removing a defender. So yeah, perhaps um, bishop c5 would be uh, a good move here. And uh, that being said, uh, I also have a threat here as well. So I might come up and attack the king. The king defends itself. Perhaps I exchange knight for light square bishop, opening up my opponent's pawn shield. Perhaps I come up and a uh, and take the uh, free pawn and my opponent might come down and attack the knight you know if uh, the bishop sacrifices itself I can't take with the pawn because the queen comes down and attacks my king so I'd have to come up with the rook the rook would come down oh no I couldn't do that sorry brain fart there um, if my opponent takes with the knight, rook comes up, rook comes down, and if I took with the pawn, sorry, we'll uh, move back. So yeah, if, um, let's go back. If my opponent took with the bishop, the rook would come up, rook comes down, pawn would come up, or um, 
Yeah. And my queen would defend this square, the pawn would defend this square. So it's not a total loss. And uh, perhaps my knight would come up and we're uh, targeting this uh, dark square bishop as well as the rook. Dark square bishop would defend itself. I'd probably defend the pawn. My opponent might take control of the e-file. I might drive my knight, my king back, defending the two pawns. My rook, uh, my opponent's rook might come down, and um, it, sorry, it does uh, attack this square as well. But I was thinking I would probably come over here, put pressure on this pawn instead. I might try to exchange rooks. My opponent comes over attacking the free pawn. I might come up and put pressure on my uh, opponent's free pawn. I'm not too sure if there's something else that I've missed here. Uh, please let me know in the comments. Perhaps my opponent would uh, come down with a 5 pawn trying to uh, pressure my knight out of the way perhaps because of the queen and the rook uh, ganging, gaining, uh, sorry, ganging up on my b2 pawn. My rook, perhaps I would play my rook up trying to defend my b2 pawn. My opponent would probably just take the free pawn defending its pawn and again putting pressure here and uh, perhaps my opponent's rook might come up wanting to take this pawn helping to support this pawn here um, there might be an idea as well for uh, my opponent's uh, dark square bishop as well to come down, try to trying to coordinate here perhaps, not on this pawn, but tr instead um, attacking my king indirectly. <laughs> might be a possibility or a long-term goal. We'll go back to the game. And I opted for this move. And uh, uh, better yet was uh, my computer had suggested, well, you miss this move, which directly attacks my opponent's queen, which um, also, I might have a possibility to come up here, which attacks my opponent's uh, rook. I'm going to go back to the game. And I opted to play this move. I had considered this move here. But I was afraid because if I push my pawn up, you know, forking the knight and the queen, then the queen would run away. And then what would I do? I'm, you know, my king is st staring down at my opponent's queen. So that's why I opted for this move, just to directly attack my opponent's queen. And of course, as I had mentioned before, there is uh, the possibility to move the knight up to attack the rook. So my computer suggests moving the pawn up, forking both knight and queen. And just like I feared, um, the queen coming up, you know, I can't take the knight with this pawn. Um, just because I'm directly affected and uh, 
this knight here is safe because I can't move that pawn. I have to defend my knight. So my computer had suggested, well, why don't you play queen a4? I can attack the knight, possibly take the knight. My pawn, uh, I do defend this square and this square, and um, my opponent can't really push their knight forward, as seen in these two red squares, you know, and plus two, um, once one eliminates the knight, um, perhaps, you know, long-term plan, let's say my opponent played uh, the knight down here, let's say, doing something really crazy, I could come down with my queen and attack my opponent's rook. But I don't think that would ever happen. And obviously moving the knight here wouldn't happen because of the, uh, the knight and putting pressure, direct pressure on my opponent's queen. So the queen would probably, probably come over trying to exchange queens. And we exchange uh, knight for pawn. There is this possibility here where my opponent can come over, take the free pawn, and attack my my king. So now I defend the pawn with my rook. And I'll show you that here. My opponent does have two attackers. So let's say my opponent decides to come down with a rook. Then I take the queen with a knight, take a more valuable piece with a less valuable piece. My rook is already defended, and my pawn here is defended as well. Well, my, my square here is defended by um, my a2 pawn. Now, um, perhaps we'd offer an exchange of queens. I take the queen, my opponent takes the queen, and I defend my knight. My opponent might push uh, their pawn, which would allow um, their king to come down to safety if needed. There is an escape square. Perhaps my rook would come up, targeting my opponent's hanging pawn. My opponent might come down, put pressure on my uh, d3 pawn. Perhaps the rook might come over, adding more pressure here, because I only have one rook defending this pawn. I could possibly bring down the bishop as well, maybe. So perhaps I take the hanging pawn. I'm not quite sure what these moves are. Um, I'm not even going to hazard a guess as to why my computer would suggest something like this. And here I thought with this particular move, uh, doubling up the rooks, trying to attack my opponent's king, and of course they have a flight square here to move to. this idea here perhaps the dark square bishop would come over trying to gain a tempo and I can come up and attack my opponent's rook so the rook has to flee just trying to find it okay and we'll go back to the game And here I was trying to figure out how am I supposed to get mate? And I thought here, attacking the king, if uh, my opponent 
decides to come down and take the rook. I do have uh, this move here. And since my opponent does not have any, uh, any escape squares pushed, the only response my opponent would have is to push the rook back up, defending the king, and then I simply come over with the rook. So I'm essentially sacrificing my knight in order to gain a checkmate. So rook comes down, I come up, checking the king. You need to defend the king. Rook comes over and then checkmate is given. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Um, I will play more online games, and as, as I say, I try to show uh, some tactics, I try to understand uh, suggestions as to um, why my computer would suggest certain moves. Um, these are all things that have helped me to become a better chess player. Uh, one of the things, too, that I do uh, sometimes is try to solve chess puzzles from time to time. Uh, lately I have been playing um, uh, Stockfish on my phone and uh, slowly trying to increase the difficulty level and um, just keep uh, progressing on. I've read uh, a few books and I kind of use those as aha moments in order to find ideas that I probably wouldn't have uh, found on my own, just like uh, using my uh, computer as a chess coach and pointing out flaws and uh, things like that. Um, as I said before, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it uh, entertaining. Please like and subscribe. I'd like to thank all my subscribers for helping support the channel, and I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.